What's up everyone, Jose here with the Super GP Dentist and today we're going to go over how to create a open tray impression for a dental implant. I'm also going to throw in a couple bonuses like adding a lab analog to the impression and also how to create a soft tissue model. And so I'm going to show you how you can do all that and how to get a good impression that looks great and gives your lab everything they need so they can create a beautiful crown. So first of all, what you're going to need is you're going to need a fully integrated implant with the healing abutment in place. So it'll be the second stage surgery portion already completed. And you're going to have to change, take out the healing abutment and place an impression coping in place. Uh, also, you're going to have to have your tray sized up and marked. And then you have to create the little holes over the area where your, your implant is in place. Uh, and always I, I like to go a little bit bigger with the size of the hole that we create because it always uh, If you go really small one big tip is you'll see that it's very difficult to visualize the actual uh, hole for the uh, analog So here I sized everything up. I am making sure now that the uh, impression coping is nice and tight and then we're gonna get started on the process of taking the impression so Right now I'm air drying the, the lab uh, impression coping, sorry. And then we're gonna go ahead and, at the same time that I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the light body PBS over the implant site. My assistant is in the back actually using the heavy body material. So here you can see I'm adding the light body all around the periphery of the impression coping. I'm also going, you know, it's hard to see here in the on the video, but I'm adding it to the buccal surfaces. I'm adding it uh, to the inner proximal surfaces on the mesial and distal to the to the uh, impression coping, and I'm just adding it all around. Just good to have a, a good amount. I like to add a little extra just to be sure and just to get a good good impression. Uh, here you can see the the heavy body material in place. You're gonna get over the hole that you created. You're gonna get a lot of goop, a lot of extra material that just coming loose there. Uh, and it's, it's good to have four hands. Have your assistant help you hold them. It's hold the uh, tray. Uh, one thing that I like to do is I, I like to go in here and just feel with my finger. I'll feel with my finger where the actual body of the uh, impression coping is in place. And one tip that works for me in my hands is I actually like to use like a, an amalgam condenser and I like to condense the, the PBS material. Just pushing on it slightly. I don't like to get any tug back. I just like to try to condense it. Um, I get really good impressions. It works in my hands. It may not work in yours. Try it and see how it goes in, in your case. Um, but it, it, it does seem to work pretty well for me. And I don't really have any you know remakes or any, any problems with the crowns that I cement in place. Uh, once it's kind of set, then I'll go in, I'll use the Explorer or the Perio Probe, and I'll go in there and remove that little extra that might be inside the area of the, of the impression coping. Uh, you can choose to put like cotton pellets in there. I don't. It's actually very, it's quicker for me to do it without. And then uh, you can unscrew everything with uh, your hex tool and then remove the, the impression and you'll see a ni very nice impression. Uh, then we'll go ahead and play, replace the healing abutment and make sure it's nice and tight. I like to torque these in place actually because they take sometimes with the patient's tongue they'll actually loosen back up and it's a pain in the butt when they come back to your office and it's waste chair time and, and uh, the patient doesn't want to be there as well. Uh, but here you can see the impression. It turned out really nice. We got some good uh, adaptation on the, uh, of the PBS material. And we're gonna add the lab analog to the to the impression. So I, you know, I use Implant Direct, and it, you know, I just make sure that this is this is actually the interactive system. So it's a kind of connection, and I, I make sure it's seated fully uh, over the hex of the conical connection and then uh, you, you'll see me just tighten this up and so what I'll do when I'm doing this it's I'm just trying to show you in the camera here but I, I'm usually holding the back end of the lang I end a lot with my left hand and then I'm tightening the screw with my right hand uh, because you can move it slightly um, you know so you can see me holding onto it there uh, but you can move it slightly within the material I use a really heavy uh, uh, heavy body PBS so it's, it's harder to do uh, but you can move it slightly if you if you just twist it all the way through with just the hex tool and not holding the, the actual lab analog. Uh, but you can see there it looks looks good. We got a good impression. Lab analog is in there nice and tight. And then uh, we can move forward from here and do a soft tissue model. You know, in my case, I use uh, GI mask. It, it's a uh, 
uh, soft tissue model material that I, that I use in my office uh, routinely. It comes with uh, a spray bottle that's an adhesive, uh, some tips, and uh, you attach it to your impression gun, basically. And here, I just go slowly around the periphery of the uh, uh, lab analog and the impression coping, just kind of going all the way across. Uh, Mesial this the buccolingual. Uh, just going slowly. I make I make sure to not uh, add any to the mesial and distal of uh, interproximal surfaces of the adjacent teeth. Uh, you just don't want that that soft tissue material in there. And uh, sometimes I'll go back over and just make sure that it's you know condensed and it's not touching any of those walls of the adjacent teeth. Uh, and then we let this set for a few minutes and it, it'll get nice and hard and you'll get. Uh, you know, you, you can have your assistants pour this up, you can have your lab pour this up, um, and then you can go ahead and uh, either use a stock abutment and prep it, you can add a, you can have a custom abutment fabricated, uh, you can do it, whatever you want to create your crown. Um, this works well for me, I, I typically will use like a stock abutment and I'll prep it on the stone model and I'll use that to send to my laboratory to create the, the zirconia crown. And you can see here the outcome. Uh, we got an area that we had uh, missing tooth. Um, took the impression, sent it to our laboratory, had the stock abutment placed, and we cemented the crown. We got a great outcome, the patient was thrilled. And this is how you can move forward and do these things in your office. All right, everyone, so that's it for today. So if you guys like what you see, please subscribe to the channel like make comments and then uh, if you guys can put anything in the comments that you guys want to see in the future videos let me know i'm here for you thanks